Hey everybody, welcome to Vintage Variety. Today I'm going to share my small collection of Miriam Haskell jewelry with you guys. I'm going to give you some tips on recognizing and identifying real Miriam Haskell jewelry. Well, this is the Miriam Haskell jewelry book. It is loaded with information and samples of her work. Miriam Haskell started her jewelry business in the 1920s. Miriam Haskell's earliest pieces of jewelry were not signed. They came with a paper tag. In fact, her pieces were not signed or stamped until sometime in the 1940s. Now the early signed pieces had a horseshoe plaque with the Miriam Haskell name on them. In the 1950s, the stamping or signature on the pieces was a flat oval shape with Miriam Haskell stamped in it. And this was used up until the late 1970s when it was changed to a similar stamping. The first piece I'm gonna show you, Miriam Haskell, and it's in the oval circle. It has the faux pearls that she was really famous for and what was called Russian gold filigree. This is one of my favorite pieces. And you can see on the back, there's the stamping. It's in the oval. It says Miriam Haskell. And when we turn this one over, it has the faux pearls, it has all of this filigree work on it. And this is actually a locket. That's the inside of this locket. Very detailed designs. A lot of her designs were floral, but not all of them were. Here is a Miriam Haskell necklace. Early unsigned Haskell necklaces had box class. And they were very intricately decorated but they were not signed. Another type of clasp that was used in Haskell jewelry was the spring ring clasp. And it was different from most spring ring clasps because it did not have the little prong on it that you would pull with your thumb to open the clasp. Later pieces that were signed had a hook design some of them still have the box class design, but it was also signed. And the hook class design was usually decorated with like an eight petal flower that had pearls and beads or rhinestones. Sometimes they also had a turtle or a dove that was attached to the top of the hook. In the late 1970s, the decorations were dropped from the hooks. In 1975, the hooks would have had a patent number on one side and Miriam Haskell on the other, and that was used up until the mid-80s. Early unsigned pieces had pierced metal backs. The metal disc would have had holes pierced into it where all of the beads and the little rhinestones and pearls would have been attached on. By the 1930s, this pierced piece here was being covered by another metal disc. During World War II, because there was a shortage of metal, um, there were pieces made just like this of pierced plastic. It wasn't until after World War II that the filigree like you see on the back of this earring, was being used. Here I have another one, and this one is done in plastic. Look at the little flower on it. And then here's the back. And then there's the Haskell mark. Now, if you see a piece um, or run across a piece on eBay or somewhere like that that 
claims to be a Haskell and it has the filigree back, beware because most of the Haskell pieces that had the filigree backing were signed. Now I'm gonna show you guys this necklace and this is the clasp, which I showed earlier. Here you can see the filigree work that's on this piece. I'm gonna put this up on the form so you can see it better. Isn't that beautiful? Just a beautiful piece of Miriam Haskell jewelry. And then this is a Miriam Haskell bracelet. You can see all the detailed beadwork. Now I'm gonna show you guys some modern pieces of Miriam Haskell jewelry. Miriam Haskell is no longer owned by the family, but they are still in business. This is Miriam Haskell for ink, pair of earrings. This is the necklace and I don't have the tags that came off of it. Miriam Haskell for ink. These are some pieces that I believe could be Miriam Haskell. I'm not sure if they are, and I'm not going to say they are, but you can see they do have the pierced backs. And then I have another pair that's very similar. The pearl's a little bit bigger on this one. And you can see it has the same pierced back also have this piece and I bought this thinking that it was a Miriam Haskell. It is a fur clip and again I don't know if this is a Miriam Haskell but it does look kind of Haskell to me. And then this last piece, this piece is destroyed. Um, I got this in a junk lot And I believe that it may very well have been a Miriam Haskell at one point in its life. Um, you can see it's very badly damaged, but do you see how this is pierced here? This is how the pieces would have been wired on and even the little leaves were pierced. Here are a couple of more brooches from my collection. This is missing the center piece. As you can see the signature on that. This is probably from the 70s. Then I have this one. This one's just a plain filigree piece. And there is the Miriam Haskell signature on that piece. Now let's take a look at some Miriam Haskell fakes. This necklace had a lot of verdigris on it. I was able to remove most of it, but the pearls are permanently stained that greenish color. I first saw this, I thought that's a Haskell. This once had pearls all the way around here. You can tell by the way it's pierced and the little clasp. But the dead giveaway on this piece is that it's filigree and it's not signed. Here is another necklace that I thought could have been in Haskell. Isn't that pretty? Look at the clasp. Turn this over. It says Japan. This is another necklace that I thought could have been a Haskell. Now it is pierced on the back. It's very, very pretty. The hook on this is not decorated. And I do believe that this is Japan also. And I have the earrings that go with this. You can see they have the filigree backs. It's not signed, it would have been signed right here. This is a designer piece. See the filigree backing on this? This is signed. This is an original by Robert. It is a very nice, weighty, quality piece. You can see the pearls, the little rhinestones. On the back, it has the filigree. So I think a lot of 
other designers did want to copy Miriam Haskell. Here's another signed piece. This is also what I would call a Haskell copycat. It's a beautiful little brooch. And this one is signed Janny. Now I'm gonna show you some pieces. These are West Germany and these are very collectible. And they are done in a Haskell style. They are done in the filigree. The earrings came with it and they are marked West Germany. And this does look Haskell. It's not, but it is very collectible costume jewelry. These earrings also look very Haskell. And these are also West German. And there's the marking on these. So I hope this video was informative. I hope it will help you understand a little bit more about how to identify and recognize unsigned pieces of Haskell and authentic Miriam Haskell jewelry. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more videos like this.